Jack Reacher is a fictional character and the protagonist of a series of books by British author Jim Grant, who writes under the pen name of Lee Child. A former major in the United States Army Military Police Corps, Reacher quit at age 36, and roams the United States taking odd jobs and investigating suspicious and frequently dangerous situations. A feature film, Jack Reacher, was released on December 21, 2012, and a sequel is in the making. Fictional biography, Jack Reacher is a former major in the United States Army Military Police Corps. He was born on a military base in Berlin on October 29, 1960. A graduate of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, he served 13 years in the military police, during which time he became part of a fictional military police unit, the 110th Special Investigations Unit, formed to handle exceptionally tough cases, especially those involving members of the U.S. Army Special Forces. Though he was demoted from major to captain in the prequel novel The Enemy, he regained his rank by the time he mustered out in 1997. He received many military awards during his career, including the Silver Star, the Defense Superior Service Medal, the Legion of Merit, the Soldier's Medal, the Bronze Star, and a Purple Heart for wounds sustained in the bombing of the U.S. Marine Corps barracks in Beirut in 1983. Since leaving the Army, Reacher has been a drifter. He wanders throughout the U.S. because he was accustomed to being told where to go, when to go and what to do for every day of his life from military childhood to military adulthood. He also felt he never got to know his own country, having spent much of his youth living overseas on military bases and at West Point. He usually travels by hitchhiking or bus. As a drifter, the only possessions he carries are money, a foldable toothbrush and, after 9-11, an expired passport and an ATM debit card. Regular references are made to the fact that Reacher's given name is Jack, that it is not a nickname for John, and that he has no middle name. His military record officially refers to him as Jack Reacher. From the time he was a boy, his family, even his mother, called him simply Reacher, an affectation that has stayed with him, but was never given to his brother. Demeanor and personality, in 61 hours, it is stated that an army psychological study of reactions to fear in children showed him as having abnormally fast reflexes and aggression levels at the age of six. Reacher believes that this abnormal level of aggression at that age is due not to genetics but because he got tired of being frightened, and trained, himself out of it. Skills, Reacher has the uncanny ability to know what time it is, at any time of the day, without referring to a clock. He often uses his internal clock as an alarm, enabling him to wake up at any time he chooses. He sometimes uses his human metronome ability to count down and calculate during time-related situations. It is revealed throughout most of the books in the series, and in particular Bad Luck and Trouble, that Reacher has a fascination with mathematics. Reacher is highly skilled at fighting, enhanced by in-depth technical and military knowledge. He has experience and skills from various martial arts, although he is not an expert in any particular style. Reacher's favorite techniques include elbow strikes, uppercuts, and headbutts. His experience, skills, knowledge, and strength aid him in fighting as he is sometimes stronger than his opponents but often matched with similar or larger enemies. As revealed in Nothing to Lose, Reacher hates confronting an opponent armed with a knife believing that he has no particular talent for it. He mentally plans his fights using physics in a scientific calculating method. He knows how to break a person's neck with one hand and kill someone with a single punch to the head or chest. In a fight against a 7FT, 400LB, steroid using thug, Reacher lifts his opponent into the air and drops him on his head. He once reflected when a fight was about to start that he could defeat his opponent because his foe would be focused on the tactical victory, whereas Reacher lived to piss on the other guy's grave. Reacher placing greater importance on winning than on how he will win. Reacher is a skilled marksman. Throughout the novels, Reacher has shown great skill in the use of various types of firearms. In addition to being the only non-Marine to win the U.S. Marine Corps 1,000-yard Invitational Rifle Competition, he also won the U.S. Army Pistol Championship and served as a pistol instructor. In one shot, 
Reacher uses his enhanced intelligence with advanced technical and military knowledge during a long-range shooting senior Euro slowing and counting his heartbeat while calculating wind, humidity, trajectory, speed, energy, and force. Reacher speaks fluent English and French, with passable Spanish. Habits and beliefs, in Killing Floor, it is revealed that he has a love for music, especially blues. It was this affinity for the blues that inspired Reacher to get off the bus at the start of Killing Floor and catapulted him into the resulting story. Also in this novel, Reacher's internal monologue reveals that he has a music collection in his head, which he listens to. Reacher had also been to a blues club on Bleecker Street immediately before the beginning of Gone Tomorrow. As revealed in Nothing to Lose, Reacher holds no religious beliefs and is openly scornful of the fundamentalist Christianity espoused by the novel's antagonist. Reacher also shows his disdain for religion when in bad luck and trouble he is traveling to Los Angeles via airline, and he states that he does not like Alaskan Airlines, because they put scripture cards on the meal trays. In Nothing to Lose Reacher indicates that he has an antipathy towards what he sees as the corruption of traditional spelling, such as the use of U for U, and Lo for Lo. He wears his clothing for two a euro three days before discarding it, usually purchasing new clothing cheaply from chain outlets. He has no steady income and lives on savings in his bank account and part-time jobs. At various points during the series, his bank account is supplemented by taking money from his enemies. Reacher knows how to drive and enjoys cars, as in Tripwire, Running Blind, Bad Luck and Trouble, and One Shot, although he says he's a bad driver and does not have a driver's license, since he does not have a permanent address. Since he has no fixed address, Reacher often eats in diners and other inexpensive restaurants. He drinks coffee constantly, the Reacher brothers' need for caffeine makes heroin addiction look like an amusing little take-it-or-leave-it sideline. Physical appearance, Reacher is 6 5 inches tall with a 50-inch chest, and weighing between 220 and 250 pounds. He has ice blue eyes and dirty blonde hair. He has very little body fat, and his muscular physique is completely natural. He is exceptionally strong, has a high stamina, but is not a good runner. Reacher has various scars, most notably a scar on his abdomen caused by a bombing in Lebanon. He also has a 3 euro 4 inch thin white scar that intersects his shrapnel scar that he received during a knife fight in Gone Tomorrow. Reacher mentions how the rough stitch work from his existing scar helped decrease the severity of his most recent attack. The cup did produce a deep, serious gash that led to Reacher passing out from blood loss. He also has a scar on his chest from a .38 bullet, a teardrop burn scar from close range gunshot that crossed his chest at point blank range and one on his arm where his brother struck him with a chisel in his youth. Reacher's nose was broken by an antagonist during the events of Worth Dying For. Upon waking and discovering the broken nose, Reacher memorably and painfully resets the break himself. Reacher was annoyed by the broken nose because after a lifetime of hard fighting, he viewed his unbroken nose as a badge of honor. Family Reacher's maternal grandfather Laurent Moutier was a furniture restorer in Paris. Thirty years old in 1914, he volunteered for the French army with the outbreak of World War I and fought at Verdun in the Somme. Between 1919 and 1929 he was commissioned to produce wooden legs for wounded veterans. Josephine Moutier was his only child. He died in 1974 at age 90, in his last days facing unflinchingly the approach of death. The young Reacher met him three times and liked him. Reacher's mother Josephine Moutier Reacher, born in France, was 30 years old when Reacher was born. She met Reacher's father in Korea and married him in the Netherlands. She was widowed in 1988, and died in 1990 at the age of 60 of cancer. When she was only 13, she joined the French resistance and under the alias Beatrice worked with Le Chemin de Fahermain, saving 80 men. She garroted a schoolmate, a boy who threatened to give her up to the Nazis. Josephine Moutier was awarded the Mar Copyright Dale de la Ra Copyright Assistance for her heroism. Reacher's father was a United States Marine Corps captain, who served in Korea and Vietnam. His military service kept his family continually moving all around the world to various military bases. 
he died in 1988. When describing his father, Jack is quoted as saying, he was, a plain New Hampshire Yankee with an implacable horror of anything fancy. He had no use for wealth and excess. Very compartmentalized guy. Gentle, shy, sweet, loving man, but a stone-cold killer. Next to him I look like Liberace. After military service, there was no place left for people like him. Jack had only one sibling, brother Joe Reacher. Two years older than Jack, Joe was born on a military base in the Philippines. Jack used to help Joe beat up the kids who gave him trouble in school, and vice versa. Joe was also a West Point graduate, and spent five years in military intelligence before joining the U.S. Treasury Department. He never won any of the good medals, only the junk awards. Joe died at age 38, having arranged a meeting with a potential investigation subject. Because he was killed in the line of duty, his name can be found on the Treasury's Roll of Honor. Acquaintances, Military Era, Elizabeth Devereux, Late Thirties, is a former Marine serving as a county sheriff in Carter Crossing, Mississippi in 1997. She appears in the affair. She was a potential lover for Reacher, as they had sex several times, but ended up drifting apart. Carla Dixon, age unknown, possibly late thirties is a forensic accountant. Formerly a major in the Army and part of Reacher's Special Investigators Unit, which he formed and led in the nineties. They are reunited in bad luck and trouble and secretly rekindle an affair, which they regret not starting back in the Army. She is described as dark, very pretty, comparatively small and slim. She is extremely good with numbers and shares Reacher's fascination with mathematics. General Leon Garber, retired, was Reacher's former commanding officer, mentor and close friend. His only child is Jody. He helped Reacher and die trying, and willed him his house, as his daughter is wealthy, didn't want it and already owns her own New York City home. He also appeared in The Enemy in the Affair, and in Trepoir. Jody Garber Jacob, 30 is the daughter of General Leon Garber. She met and fell in love with Reacher when she was 15 and was off limits to him. In Trapoire, she is divorced, using her married name, working as a corporate attorney and reunites romantically with him after her father's funeral. She and Reacher lived together in New York City and upstate New York in Leon's house which was left in his will to Reacher, his surrogate son. She is mentioned in Echo Burning as having moved to Europe. She appeared in Trapoia, and Running Blind. Eileen Ann Hutton, age unknown, is a brigadier general in the Army's Judge Advocate General's Corps. She and Reacher had a relationship prior to, and featured in, One Shot. Dominique Cole, 29, was a sergeant on the way up assigned to Reacher's unit when he was a captain in the Army. She appeared in Persuader, where Reacher remembers the events that led to her death ten years earlier. Duncan Munro, late thirties, is a member of Reacher's old 110th MP unit. He appears in The Affair. Francis Neagley, late thirties, is a partner with a successful private security firm, and former Army Master Sergeant and military policeman. She is of medium height, slim, and has dark hair and eyes. She spends large amounts of time in the gym and has a purely platonic relationship with Reacher, not liking to be touched. Her demeanor suggests that she could be considered a female counterpart to Reacher. Rarely impressed, Reacher describes her as sometimes scary. She appeared in Without Fail, The Affair and Bad Luck and Trouble. The first page of Bad Luck and Trouble has a dedication for the real Francis L. Neagley, which refers to real-life Francis Neagley, who won a Bouchirk and charity auction for the naming rights to a character. Stan Ray, late thirties is a member of Reacher's old 110th MP unit. He is handsome, youthful, and full of energy. A kind of man that gets the job done. He appears in Bad Luck and Trouble and the Affair. Dave O'Donnell, late thirties, is a member of Reacher's old 110th MP unit. He appears in Bad Luck and Trouble. He is tall, fair, handsome, like a stockbroker carries an army blade in one pocket and a pair of ceramic brass knuckles in the other. The ceramic knuckles are made from a composite stronger than steel, harder than brass and gets past any metal detector. 
he is meticulous, doesn't mind paperwork, and is usually underestimated because he looks like a white-collar office worker. Lieutenant Summer, 25, is an African-American lieutenant in the Army Military Police. She is petite and slender, and appeared in The Enemy. Wandering Era, Officer Roscoe, 30, is a police officer, appearing in Killing Floor. Holly Johnson, 27, is a newly inducted Federal Bureau of Investigation special agent and former Wall Street stock analyst. She is dark, attractive, self-assured and a knee ligament injury sustained whilst playing soccer requires her to use a cane. She appeared in Die Trying. She is the only daughter of General Johnson, head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and is the goddaughter of the U.S. President. Lisa Harper, 29, is an FBI agent, stationed at Quantico. She appeared in Running Blind. Alice Amanda Aaron, 25, graduated from Harvard Law School, practicing law at a legal mission in Pecos, Texas, as penance for coming from a wealthy family. She appeared in Echo Burning. Carmen Greer, 30, is a housewife, short, slim, dark-skinned, fine-boned, maybe 100 pounds. She is married with one child and an abusive husband. She appeared in Echo Burning. Mary Ellen Freleich, 35, was a U.S. Secret Service agent, charged with protecting the vice president. She had short fair hair, and is quietly confident. She dated Joe Reacher, before he broke up with her prior to his death. Later she was in a relationship with Jack. She appeared in Without Fail. Susan Duffy, early 30s, is a rogue agent with the Drug Enforcement Administration. She is pale, slim, and attractive, and appeared in Persuader, where she beds Reacher. Vaughn, exact age unknown, is a police officer in Hope, Colorado. She is probably less than 5 feet 6, probably less than 120 pounds, probably less than 35 years old according to Reacher's estimate. Married to a totally incapacitated casualty of the war in Iraq. She befriends Reacher in Nothing to Lose. Detective Teresa Lee is a New York City Police Department detective who aids Reacher's takedown of an Al-Qaeda team in Gone Tomorrow. They had a brief romantic episode before Reacher left to complete his task. Lauren Pauling, early 50s, is an ex-FBI agent who now acts as a private investigator. She often refers to herself as being old. She appears in the hard way. Susan Turner, early 30s, is a major in the Army and is the commander of the 110th MP. She is described as a little above average height, slender, long dark hair tied back, tan skin and deep brown eyes. Her face is described as conveying intelligence and authority and youth and mischief at the same time. Her defining characteristic is her voice. Warm, a little husky, a little breathy, a little intimate. She appears in 61 Hours and Never Go Back. Jack Reacher novel series. The Reacher novels are written either in the first person or third person. The schedule for the Reacher series, previously one per year, was stepped up in 2010 with 61 Hours and Worth Dying for both released in that year. The United States is the setting for most of the novels so far. The novels are set in locales ranging from New York City and his house on the Hudson River in upstate New York, to Los Angeles to small towns in the Midwestern and Southern United States. To date, Reacher's travels outside the U.S. have taken him to rural England and Paris, France, where Reacher visits his dying mother with his brother. Short Stories Reacher has also appeared in several short stories by Child. Second Son, Deep Down, and Not a Drill were all released originally for the Amazon Kindle although Second Son was later included in the American and Canadian paperback editions of The Affair, and Deep Down with the American and Canadian paperback editions of A Wanted Man. High Heat with the American paperback edition of Never Go Back, Everyone Talks with the UK edition of Never Go Back. Second Son Second Son is a snapshot of the life of Reacher and his family circa 1974, while they are stationed on a military base in Okinawa. Upon arriving they immediately get into deep trouble that is compounded by some bad news. The action is interspersed with contemplative moments, such as when Jack's grandfather, a prosthetic limb maker and World War I veteran in Paris, 
recounts that a year of a great war leaves a country with three armies, an army of cripples, an army of mourners, and an army of thieves. Deep Down, set in 1986. Summoned by military intelligence to Washington, D.C., Reacher is sent undercover. The assignment that awaits him, the army is meeting with its Capitol Hill paymasters for classified talks on a new, state-of-the-art sniper rifle for U.S. forces. But vital details about the weapon are leaking from someone at the top of the federal government and probably into the hands of unidentified foreign arms dealers. The prospect of any and every terrorist, mercenary, or dictator's militia getting their hands on the latest superior firepower is unthinkable. Reacher is tasked with infiltrating the top secret proceedings and revealing the traitor. He targets a quartet of high powered army political liaison officers, a Euro, all of them fast track women on their way to the top. According to his bosses, it's a zero danger mission, but Reacher knows that things are rarely what they seem. Guy walks into a bar. The story is set in the moments before the beginning of the novel Gone Tomorrow. Reacher, while at a blues music club, observes what he believes to be the beginning of a kidnapping as part of a Russian mafia dispute. This story was published in the New York Times on June 6, 2009. James Penn's New Identity, the story features Reacher, still in the army as a captain, helping James Penny a Vietnam War veteran who has recently been made redundant and had his car stolen. When Penny accidentally becomes a fugitive, Reacher helps Penny obtain a new identity so he can start a new life. The story has appeared in an anthology. High Heat, it is July 1977. Jack Reacher is almost 17, and he stops in New York City on the way to visit his brother at West Point. The summer heat is suffocating, the city is bankrupt and the mad gunman known as Son of Sam is still on the loose. Reacher meets a woman with a problem, and agrees to help her but then the power grid fails and the lights go out, plunging the lawless city into chaos. What does a visiting teenager do in the dark? If that visiting teenager is Jack Reacher, the answer is plenty. Everyone Talks, a short story published as part of the UK hardback edition of Never Go Back, the story is told from the perspective of a female detective investigating an alleged shooting. Reacher, while in hospital, relates the events prior to the story beginning. This was also included in the Junior Euro July 2012 Esquire magazine, not a drill, hitchhiking in Maine near the Canadian border, Reacher is picked up by a trio of Canadians who claim to be outdoor enthusiasts. At the end of the road trip. Reacher parts ways with his companions and finds himself near a hiking trail sealed off by the U.S. Army under mysterious circumstances. Reacher subsequently investigates the closure of the trail when one of the Canadians returns to seek his help. Other authors' works, Reacher is mentioned several times in the Stephen King novel Under the Dome, where he is described by the character Colonel Cox as the toughest goddamn army cop that ever served, in my humble opinion. Lee Child's endorsement of Dome appears on the cover of at least one edition of the book. Reacher is referred to in the Hunt for Reacher series of novels and short stories by Diane Capri, but is never explicitly seen. Capri has said in an interview that the series was inspired by her wondering, what's Reacher doing between books? In film, Paramount Pictures hired Academy Award nominated screenwriter Josh Olson to adapt one shot, under the title Jack Reacher. Christopher McQuarrie, Oscar-winning screenwriter for The Usual Suspects was then brought in to rewrite Olsen's draft. It was announced in July 2011 that Tom Cruise would play Reacher in the movie. Lee Child was quoted as saying, Reacher's size in the books is a metaphor for an unstoppable force, which Cruise portrays in his own way. All Jack Reacher books have been optioned for film. See also Lee Child, Military Brat, Notes References External links, Author Lee Child's Official Website, McCarthy Malware Warning, December 23, 2012 Jack Reacher Official Website